It's the braid filter. Beautiful. Complex. Unpredictable. All the things we love. Not to mention lucrative. Possibly. We will take a look at that in a moment. Uh, but this is a bit of a departure from what we've been doing. Uh, a lot of the settings on a lot of the indicators we chronicle on the Indicator Profile series are pretty simple. This one is not. Fair warning. But it might be worth the effort. Let's get into that. Now, if you're new, enjoy the video. But just understand, you're not going to understand most of it. That's fine. Go to nononsenseforex.com, read the front page, watch the first video. You will be well on your way. And I will see you on the other side. Uh, but for now, let's get into the braid filter. Uh, now, now this was created in 2006 by a man who calls himself Mr. Pips. Kind of hard to take a guy like that seriously, but deserves a chance. So we will give him one. Now, this is a confirmation indicator. As far as the type, though, uh, it's many different types. This is, I don't want to say three indicators in one, but yeah, I mean, it kind of is three indicators in one. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a moment. Uh, it, it, there's no use to explaining that here. You just have to see it. And as far as exit indicators go with this, I'm not a fan. On the surface, it looks like it would have potential as an exit indicator. But I'm telling you just from experience, this is probably not the way you want to go. Okay, now let's explain what we're getting into here. There are three versions of this, like I said, but they all give the exact same signal. All right, that's the take home point. Don't forget this. We're gonna look at the more complex version of it first. So I can kind of show you the inner workings of how it actually creates a signal. Um, and I, but I do recommend the simpler versions at the end of the day. All right, and I'll explain why in a moment, but you can download all three if you want. You guys know how we do. We give you the link at the bottom takes to the indicator library, we'll have all of them right there and we will label them as clearly as we possibly can. And by me, I mean Dan. But now that we've gone over this part, let's take a look at the complex version of the braid filter. Now, here's the rule. You have this yellow line right here, all right? It almost serves as a volume indicator of sorts to where and to where the other lines are kind of like the Arun up and down, if you guys remember that. You know, you see a cross happen, a two lines cross, and you see which one is above the other. So in this case right here, if you can see it, the blue is going over the red, that's gonna be a long signal. However, the signal must be above the yellow line for the two lines cross portion of the indicator to give you a go signal. All right, if it's down here, like over here, it's not a go signal yet. You need to wait until the line that's higher than the other one gets above this yellow line here. So those are the conditions. If you see across below the line, you wait until the line gets above the yellow. If you see across above the line, you may enter right away. Now, sometimes it's hard to see. Like right here, it's hard to tell where the crosses were. In that case, the best thing to do is just take your mouse cursor, and I can't do it because this is a screenshot, but you hover over it on your MT4, and you will get a, an accurate reading that way. And then you can decide if those numbers are above the yellow or below. Now, I know a lot of you at this point are indicator heads. You have tons of experience with this stuff. This was not really super complex to you, but for a lot of people, especially those who are just starting out, you know, this is pretty hard to decipher. So I wanted to start with this, but then move on to the next version here. Remember, these things all give you the exact same signal, but this one is done in histogram form. All right. Now, what Dan put up here, gray bars, no signal. That is true. In this particular case, we're looking for the color change. So we're looking, even though this is a failed signal, for the histogram to go from red to green. This was a long. And then the very next candle was a short. And then this was a long. And they pretty much all failed. And then this was a short which actually gave you something. 
if the candle changes, but that candle change goes below the blue line, you have a gray bar, and that is not a signal. However, stay with me here, if you have a gray bar below the line, and it turns into a colored bar, like this right here, this is a signal, and would have been a nice one. Don't worry, there is a simpler version than this. <laughs> but I wanted to go over the histogram version with you while we were here. Now, if you remember, like I said last week, too, you know, these examples do give you quite a bit of false signals. But like I always say, too, that's where the rest of your algorithm comes in. And a lot of these programmers don't trade and they don't know what they're doing, so they just put up whatever picture they can find. And that doesn't mean it's a bad indicator. Um, I would dismiss them all the time back in the day because I did everything by hand and I was looking for any reason I possibly could to dismiss an indicator and move on to the next one. And so I said, hey, if they can't even show me a good example in the picture, then that gives me a reason to skip it. Was I right to do that? Probably not. Uh, but you can't turn back the hands of time. Now, hopefully I haven't lost you because there is one final version of this and it is much, much easier to read. This is going to be the chart indicator or, or uh, overlay indicator version of the braid filter to where it just turns your candles into those histogram bars. Super easy to read. When there's a color change from red to green, that is a long. If it's a color change from green to gray, that is nothing. All right. If you decide to use this as an exit indicator, maybe that is something. Uh, but for actual entry signals, you ignore it. Now, if you just started looking at this currency pair right here, then yeah, then you would have another go signal here. But for this long, as soon as you enter here, you would go until your exit, until your exit indicator tells you not to anymore. That's it. It's one of the many reasons I think it's so much better to have another exit indicator apart from something like this. A, it probably works better. B, it's going to be less confusing. And then on the color change, like even right here, from gray to red, that's going to be a short. And then right here, it would flip long, and you would go this way. So grays are nothing. The only thing you care about is a color change, and that change is either a green candle or a red candle. Green is long, red is short, simple, mostly. And here's kind of the lesson of the week. If I haven't already given a couple smaller ones, but I've always said in the past too, but I'm going to say it again and make it a little more clear. After you enter a trade, especially if you have something like this on your screen, it might be in your best interest to take it off until the trade is actually over. I think anything that could or might distract you from what you are trying to accomplish is a good thing to get off of your screen while you were in the trade. Remember, we make all our money after the trade has been entered. This is where like 95% of your psychology comes into play, is when you are in the trade, you have money on the line, and you are watching that total go up and down. So enter the trade, set your take profit and stop loss levels, put your exit indicator up, take everything else off, call it a day. I just don't want anybody using this indicator and then getting into like this long here and said, oh my God, it's gray, I better get out. Now, you probably should have, but your exit indicator should have told you to get out before this drop happened anyway. You know, things like this are just here to distract you. And that's not what we want. We're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of looking at things we shouldn't have been looking at, and it made us exit the trade prematurely. So even those of you who think you have really tight trading psychology, just don't leave anything to chance. Okay. Moving on to testing, please understand if you don't like the way we test, we don't care. Moving on. The links you will get below, just so you know, you have the link to my automation blog, which shows a video on how to test these yourself if you want to. Really nice. Also, there's a guy that uh, can transfer MT4 indicators into TradingView. I know a lot of you people ask about that in the comments section. Uh, that service has been available for a long time now, and that link is where you go to find it. You will have a deep dive on this indicator, and boy, is it deep. Huge, robust blog post on StonehillForex.com this week, um, going over everything, all this, the, the settings and stuff like that and what they mean and why. 
You know, if you really want to dork out on this stuff, these links are always there for you. And then, last but certainly not least, a place where you can go find them all. Simple as that. Now, moving on to the euro dollar. Uh, this is pretty good. Um, kind of break even just about on the default. But once the tweaks came in, turned into something pretty darn nice. And on the four hour, you know, not so great on the default. But after the tweaks, which we always show you on that blog post, um, turned out to be something pretty workable. Now on to gold. Even better. Decent on the default, better after the tweaks. Now the amount of trades do go up, depending on how many pairs you already trade, how many metals pairs you mess with. This might be too high, this might be right in your wheelhouse. We will talk more about total trades as we go further. I know people still have questions on that. It really is a personal preference and it's based on so many different things. Um, that I re there's a reason why I don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but don't let it throw you off. Just understand that that's, that's what Dan came up with. Um, and then over here, uh, really bad on the default, but actually turned into something good with the tweaks. When you have so many different settings on this one, you have like five settings to manipulate. You could make anything bad pretty good. So that's, that's another takeaway too. You might have something really complex here, but even if it doesn't perform that well on the default, just know there are so many different ways you can manipulate it to give you much better signals. You know, it's, it's worth not giving up on. However, the coup de grace of this entire video is Bitcoin. Are you ready for this? Ridiculous. Highest results we've ever had on the indicator profile series. On the default alone, you're getting a 32% return on your investment. On the four hour, you're getting 50, 51. <laughs> Nuts. And the tweaks do make it better, you know, albeit a little bit better down here. But I've never seen numbers like this on the indicator profile series. I was testing a lot of these indicators back in 2012, 2013 when the market was going crazy. And I still wasn't seeing numbers like this. But I'll tell you what though, traders, for Bitcoin, it actually doesn't surprise me. The only thing that does surprise me is we haven't seen numbers like this yet. If you go one year back with Bitcoin, you have that whole period of time where it went from 4, 000, um, I'm sorry, 40,000 all the way up to 69,000, and then all the way down to 17,000. That's a lot. Percentage-wise, that is extraordinary. If you saw that on a Forex pair, God help the country that was happening to it would be Armageddon, twice over. But with crypto, that's just what crypto does. I said it in the trade crypto video. If done right, the results can be insane. And look no further. So this one was a big episode. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. Um, please subscribe and hit the bell too. Uh, hitting the like button means a lot now because there's so many people out there, maybe not so much in the Forex world. Most Forex traders probably know who I am or have heard of this channel before, but a lot of people in the technical analysis world have not. And we want to be able to share this with them too. So give us a like, subscribe, hit the bell. Don't miss anything. We will keep these coming. All it takes is one traders. You know that. And if we can bring that to one person in some way, shape, or form, then that is what we are going to do. But like I said a long time ago in my early videos, simply giving you something like this does absolutely nothing. You're the one who has to take a bunch of code and turn it into something amazing. So take what we do give you, put in the work, and go get it.